So not many videos last week. Uh, I was off. Um, I was a bit sick, and but I'm fully recovered now. So I thought we'd just get back into it all with a couple of tours. I'll do a tour of the kitchen garden today, and then in a couple of days' time, I'll do a tour of the allotment, and then you'll be all caught up with what's going on, and hopefully things will be back to normal from there on in. So uh, let's get on and have a look round. So let's take a quick look round the kitchen garden. And yeah, let's start in the tomato corner. So these tomatoes have come on brilliantly in the last few weeks. And these are tumbler. And you can already see a lot of trusses on them. And loads more to come. I think the key to a tumbling tomato like these is to give them a really big pot. You know, a lot of people plant them in little tiny hanging baskets and you do get a decent crop, but by comparison with what you're going to get in a nice big pot, it's quite considerable really for the space. I tend to think that I get more tomatoes off these than I do the ones in the polytunnel. It's just that the ones in the polytunnel are a bit tastier. So uh, these are Crimson Crush and I'm letting multiple stems grow off these and just training them up the wall on these wires here. And uh, yeah, it's just partly because I'm lazy, but partly because I just want to maximise the yield off them. I've got another one here. I've got a tree here. This is an apple tree. And interestingly, it's just coming into flower again. I don't think I don't think I got any apples from the first flowering. But there's a few stems here with uh, new flowers coming, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And then we've got potatoes, potatoes everywhere. So most of what's at this end of the garden are uh, sarpamira. So I've got sarpamira here and here and here and all the way along here. Various different um, planting dates because I was using these containers for green garlic. And then this is the oldest of our courgette plants. And as you can see, we've been harvesting that one for a very long time now. And it's getting a bit exhausted in that little pot, so we'll probably compost it fairly soon. And then we've got the climbing frame. So we've got a few successions of peas here. So this is our this is the last succession of peas that we'll be doing. This is Alderman. These will grow hopefully right up to the top of this frame. Um, they were only planted a few days ago, so uh, yeah, they're doing pretty well, growing quite strongly. It'd be nice to see them thicken out a bit. There's actually quite a few plants in there, plenty, um, but at the moment they're concentrating on growing up rather than throwing out lots of side shoots. So in here we've got golden beetroot, they're looking quite nice. So then we've got various different types of sugar snap and moorish two peas and again they're looking really nice climbing quite high i just keep adding a new string uh, every week and they just grow through that and some more there and then here we've got i think paris silver skin uh, pickling onions but you can leave them to grow on just to be normal main crop onions and then here we've got uh, North Holland Blood Red. Uh, these are spring onions, so these need to be picked fairly soon. I've kind of got myself far too many spring onions, unfortunately. All coming at once. Even with all my practice at growing spring onions, I still seem to manage to <laughs> achieve this uh, glut at this time of year. And then unfortunately, I've got two different types here of um, spinach, which are both meant to be summer spinaches uh, and hence slow to bolt. This one is Mikado, and this one is a trial spinach, spinach from Grow Seed. And both of them are running to seed. And I think. The problem is that they were just planted out just as the kind of heat wave hit 
and that just triggered them to uh, to run to seed really quickly which is a bit of a shame really because we've only got well we have enough spinach to keep us going I'll show you that later in the front garden but it's just a shame when you've planted something out and you know you're only going to get one harvest off it um, I really like efficient plantings that give me a nice continuous harvest over a very long period of time that's one of the ways that I keep the amount of gardening time down to a manageable level for me and this is not one of those plants so um, anyway there we go they wanted to seed I've got another batch planted sown rather and I'll be replanting this bed fairly soon so I've got some new lettuces these have not had a harvest off them yet so they will keep me going for a few weeks and then there's the third succession of beans so we've got some runner beans there and then all down here are French beans they were planted out last week and they're just sort of coming out of their sort of transplant shock uh, period and just starting to climb so within a week they'll be right up here and then down here we've got garlic interplanted with spring onions and to be honest I don't really need those spring onions so uh, I'll have to remember that for next year and so these are my oldest beds really and so I'll just take you a quick look through these so we've got salads picked hard yesterday the day before yesterday just starting to recover now and although they look a bit sparse right now by Sunday when we harvest them again they'll be uh, looking pretty full again and this is the way I like to harvest the lettuces really hard at this time of year so this bed I've got main crop shallots interplanted with parsnips both of them seem to be surviving each other okay at the moment everything's kind of pushed over as you can see and that's because I let this grapevine grow a bit and it was kind of lying down over here and so they're all kind of pushing over searching for the light on this side but now the grapevine's pruned a bit better they should be okay and then here we've got some garlic interplanted into beetroot I'm not quite sure what's happening with the beetroot because it's growing really well at that end and not very well at this end which is kind of counterintuitive because there's more light here than there is there so I'm not exactly sure I think this beetroot is growing okay but it's not growing well I think it was planted too early and as a result of that you know some of it hasn't thrived maybe the stuff at the back which was close to the wall which was warmer and more sheltered has done better than this which was only a little bit further away obviously from the wall but I can see immediately really that there's very little growth on these quite a lot of growth on the ones at the back so it's amazing really the differences in a microclimate that exist close to a warm wall I suspect they got more frosts in April than the ones at the back there and then I've got another spinach now this is, isn't a summer spinach this is a spring spinach and so not surprisingly this is going to seed we've had two harvests off this we won't get another harvest off so this bed is going to be cleared again and replanted pretty soon I don't actually have anything to plant in here right now which is kind of surprising for me but um, that's just the way it is but it's nice to get some beds cleared and waiting for new plantings just reduces the work again and at this time of year I'm not doing very much work at all on the gardening so uh, it's nice to be ahead of everything and again another bed here picked really hard back it's kind of you know it's kind of scary when you pick everything so hard but it all the covers and this is my shadiest bed and so I've got collets in here and 
shady beds are perfect for things like Brussels sprouts and collets because they have such a long growing period and I find that the ones that grow really slow they last the longest and so these will probably be harvested in mid spring and th you know the ones on the allotment that are in full sun they'll probably be harvested sort of November December January time so it's quite nice to have again these different successions effectively created by different microclimates people are always asking me what are all these cans for well they were there to support the bird netting in fact if you look there they are still supporting bird netting over those uh, golden beetroot but I just generally leave them in and I seem to get you know what they seem to be like a marker a stay away marker for the birds and they just continue to work as a stay away marker even after the nets have been removed so I don't know whether it works but it seems to work so that's why I leave them in and I've got some carrots in here and the germination of these was quite poor and so I've done another sowing and you just see new ones coming up in all of the gaps and so hopefully with the two sowings there I should get uh, a fairly good yield from this bed and it is nice to have some carrots here in the back garden these are two shone these will last through until spring um, the beginning of spring and you know we don't always want to go to the allotment in winter to do a harvest and we've got a, pretty much everything that we need here in the back garden if the weather's poor so it's it's just nice to have some carrots um, we'll have loads of stuff in our store and loads of fresh stuff in all these beds which will all start transitioning to the winter crops in August time and we've got masses of potatoes here as well and these are all charlottes which at the moment we're growing these are all for a main crop harvest and then we've got some cara up there as well and we generally like we really like charlottes and so we like to grow them as a first early and second early and a main crop they work really well they've got to use some tricks to get them to grow successfully uh, when you do it like that but they're just fantastic so even in these big containers 35 litre containers we've only got two tubers because we want nice big um, bacon potatoes uh, for harvest in August and early September before we switch over to the true main crops which we'll probably harvest in October some we'll probably even leave in the containers and harvest as we need them through into spring and as you can see my little hardening off area is empty but it's soon going to start filling up with uh, brassicas late season brassicas cherry trees doing quite nicely pretty good yield on there making a lot of use of this patio now and the blueberries are coming on really well very happy with most of them although I've had some problems just planted these cuttings, gooseberry cuttings this year. I'm uh, quite pleased to see a crop on these already. But I'll just show you some of my blueberry problems. So this plant looks fantastic, it had an amazing crop and then the plants just died on me. No idea why. And similar sort of problem on this one, look. Just quite a lot of it died there's still some branches that seem okay but generally speaking I've got a great harvest on the blueberries this year I just can't wait for them to ripen <laughs> and then strawberries these old strawberry beds still chugging along giving us a good daily harvest in July and raspberries up there these are all summer fruiters although some of the varieties do fruit quite late into you know they don't fruit into September but into August at least and then the perennial kales looking a bit straggly I'm going to start taking off a lot of this lower 
growth now that's looking really quite unhealthy. I just need some space in my green bin for that. Got a new plant coming there. I have got some <laughs> sprouts in here, but honestly, they have not done well. So I might take those out. Not everything does well. So I'm really looking forward to this being a really shady little corridor here with the shed on this side and all of my climbing beans and peas on this side. It won't last very long because obviously these peas are in full production now. So within a month or so, these will all be out. And definitely by August, this, all this space down here will all be replanted because it's full of onions. And by then, you know, these peas will have gone as well. And it's a bit of a shame, but I might try a late crop of French beans or something down here. I suspect that if you plant French beans in July, then you're probably going to get a good harvest in September. Cherry trees are doing okay. We just had our first few cherries of these, but harvest was no is nowhere near as good as it was last year. But the apple harvest is better. But it's still a decent crop. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's still nice to have. These are very old trees now, so I'm not surprised that they're not doing so well. Eventually, you know, you can see they're not very healthy. Eventually we'll take those out and replant them. But we've got a good crop of pears coming. So I'm quite happy with that. I think one of the things when you're gardening is you just can't expect everything to do well every year. But when you've got a lot of different varieties growing in lots of different places, it all adds up to abundance every year. We decided to do more potatoes this year, but to try and keep them out of the way. And so basically it's, they're all in nooks and crannies where they don't get in the way of football games and you know just generally enjoying the patios and things like that. So I've just you know done a lot of this sort of squeezing in and it seems to have worked really nicely so far. I think we've got about 12 extra tubs in this year by comparison with last year but as I said it, they don't, it doesn't feel like that because they're all squirreled away got some kales here interplanted with some spring onions and the main growing space here is really starting to mature nicely so the kales are doing great quite a few different varieties there all different tastes and textures I know a lot of people say they don't like kales but for me that just means they haven't tried enough varieties this is Pentland Brig this is quite a cabbagey one so for people who who really like uh, cabbage but they don't like for example a curly kale this is a good one to try dazzling blue here and um, uh, some Tuscan cows here, looking really lush. A few little caterpillars on these now, so you have to kind of watch them. And I might start spraying with BT, um, but uh, the damage is really minor because the the caterpillars are really tiny, so I'm not so worried about those. Onions are coming along quite nicely. Quite a few beds of onions here. Red cabbages doing okay. We had lots of problems with snails in this bed, but I think we've got on top of it now. And then we've got some spinach. And this one is also going to seed, but fortunately we've had quite a few harvests off this now. And my experience with this type of spinach is summer spinach and this variety here is called Mikado is that even when it starts to flower the process is very slow and so you can continue harvesting leaves for maybe three harvests off it 
even during the flowering process, maybe even more than three harvests. So that is, you know, quite an improvement over true spinach. Um, we've got some char there, it's nice, it's really happy under the shade of this tree here. And this is a bit more of a sunny spot, and so we've got some courgettes there. And then we've got some collets up against the wall. And you can start harvesting the leaves of these collets now. Um, just like one leaf every couple of weeks won't hurt the plant at all. And then we've got some beetroot there. And then more of that Mikado spinach. And I'll show you, there you see, it's just starting to flower. But with a true spinach, what happens is that all the energy goes into flowering. But with this Mikado, still a lot of energy goes into leaf growth, even while it's flowering. And that's the difference. So there's some flowers there, and that is pretty much it for the front garden. So I hope you like this quick video. My name is Steve Richards. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.